Did I say you tablet? Ah, oh, I'm so stupid. Yeah, you kind of are. But that's not the point we're trying to make. Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I am joined by my dear brother, Jonas Buck. So he can help us review the Samsung Chromebook Plus V2. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO48. So Jonas. Yeah. Welcome to your podcasting debut. I actually did a podcast with you a long, long time ago with which, Caleb. Which one was it? We reviewed League of Legends, I think. Did we? I think it was League of Legends. Okay. Oh, that must have been on 8-Bit. Yeah. Yeah. A very long time ago in Ryan Rampersad's basement. Yes. Um, Fantastic. So it's not my debut. No. And you know, that means that I don't need to make like a person page with a bio for you and everything because that'll be already on the website. I also don't need people knowing that much about my <laughs> life. <laughs> and you know what you know what just occurred to me? Um, I actually don't know how similar our voices sound because like my voice sounds different in my head than like yeah, when other people no, hear. I just sound incredibly homosexual okay. in recordings, that's, so don't worry about that's that. That's fair. <laughs> I'm just remembering one time when I was helping Dad with like his voicemail, mm -hmm. and I heard my voice through the phone, and I was like, wait, this sounds like Dad on the phone. So apparently we have like the same voice. Anywho, we're here to review a Chromebook. So this Chromebook, this particular one, is kind of the... I mean, as the title implies, it's version two of the Samsung Chromebook Plus. Um, and you had the Samsung Chromebook Plus last year. Version yeah. one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And we def we would have reviewed that, but then that Samsung <laughs> Chromebook Plus got destroyed by a semi-truck uh, when we got rear-ended. Just like my femur. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Fun stuff. <laughs> That Samsung Chromebook Plus was kind of the first part of the first wave of like Chromebooks that allowed you to install Android on them, which was why I was super excited to be able to like review it. Um, and here we are a year later and uh, the second version is out. So that's the one that we'll review. So the basics here uh, for the pricing, um, there's only one configuration of this this Chromebook. Uh, it's uh, $500 um, and it... Uh, it comes with um, 32 gigabytes of storage, I believe. Yeah. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more when we talk about the specs. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of this this like hybrid laptop tablet thing. It flips all the way around. It's got a touch screen. So, um, it's and got two cameras, yeah. which we'll get into. But <laughs> yeah. It's very nice. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, man. 2018 is a great year to be talking about like cameras on, on laptops. Because there are some weird, weird ones out there right now. Like this one. Yeah. 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 So let's start by talking about the screen itself. Um, so it's a 16 by 10 display, 12.2 uh, inches. It's an LED at 1920 by 1200. Uh, and it's a touch screen. So how good does it look? Um very good. I mean, it's not... The screen isn't too big. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I remember i think it was for actually the version one um like the icons and everything because the resolution was so high but on such a small screen mm. were like smaller than i was mm -hmm. used to um but like this it's fine it feels you know normal so they, size, they've scaled those up i don't know if they actually did or if i'm just like more used to it now okay i i can't say with any certainty about that um but it it feels great using it. I mean, the touch screen is um I don't really know if like different touch screens have different sensitivities or anything, but like you Yeah. Um it comes with like a built-in stylus that you can pop out. Um Did the did the first and, version come with a stylus? Yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, it also came with a stylus and um it's really nice. It doesn't like um I don't know, dirty up the screen or anything like your greasy little right. fingers might. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I try to use uh, the stylus as much as possible. Uh, and it, it feels great to use. I mean, the, the interface and everything. Um, and also with the touch screen, there's like a little icon down at the lower right hand corner mm -hmm. on the on the 
bar that's down there, whatever that's called. Um, that like in like the notification like a, uh, area. Yeah, yeah, right next to that, that has like a stylus symbol, and you can touch that, and you can like do all sorts of things. You can change it to like a, a laser pointer mode, which I'm okay. not really sure exactly what that does. Maybe if I like plugged it into a, a, like a presentation, and I like. Yeah, or something. So like I I think that's probably for like if you're mirroring your display up to a projector, then like you can have a little red dot follow the wherever you have the stylus so that people can just see like where you're pointing on the screen. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what it's for. I haven't tried that aspect yet, but um and then also you can like there's like a capture screen button that takes a screenshot. Oh, nice. And so that's how you do that cuz I we were trying to figure that out. Um yeah and, for for the D D character yeah, sheet and, yeah uh let me take a look actually because i have it with me right here um and then like you can yeah laser pointer capture reach and which is mm -hmm. just like you know so you like you like use the stylus screen. to circle an area and it just take a, a screenshot yeah well of it's that. a it's a like oh okay a, a square no rectangle rectangle yeah um oh I accidentally did it and took one of Michelle Obama's cheek. But anyway, <laughs> um, and then you can also like make a note and stuff. And I don't know. It's really convenient and um, it feels great to use. I don't know. I mean, the mouse sensitivity is fine for me, mm -hmm. although you can always mm -hmm. just change that in settings and whatnot. Um, now, the, mm. the screen does have a major difference from last year, because last year was it like a 3 by 2 screen, I think, or something like that. Yeah, which felt a little odd mm -hmm. to have, seeing how most, um, you know, displays and, and videos and yeah. whatnot aren't in that, that aspect, aspect ratio, ratio yeah. anymore. Um, so this feels a lot more natural, because mm -hmm. I went from, like, a heavy-duty gaming laptop to the yeah. version one and now to this mm -hmm. so this feels a lot more like what i'm used to yeah um and i don't know what else you want to know i mean it, it the display is fine 19 yeah whatever it was 1980 by 1200 yeah actually that's that's um, one of the things that like chromebooks kind of i mean you know the cheaper chromebooks makes them feel cheap is that like they're 11 inch screens with like 1366 by 768 you know and mm -hmm. it's like yeah it's fine but it does feel like a 200 hundred dollar laptop a bit, right a bit like grainy yeah like, so yeah. like having a full hd display at 12 inches like that feels pretty premium yeah it, yeah. it does i definitely feel a bit bougie um <laughs> with it but that's what i spent the money for <laughs> um it is more a lot more expensive than other chrome yeah but... yeah um Although it, I think it is important for like the Chromebook ecosystem ca to kind of have that range of different price, you know, levels available all the mm -hmm. way on up to like the ooh seventeen hundred dollar Chromebook Pixel that you can get. Yeah, it it's insane. I thought this was like the most expensive. One. It's not quite no. no. Um, Google like the Chromebook Pixel is the one that's made by Google, um, oh, okay. and it starts like. If you get the 128 gigabyte right version, it's like $800, but you can like beef it all the way up to have an i7 processor. And it's, yeah, it's basically like a really powerful laptop, but it's running Chrome OS. Yeah, that, that look have... of incredulity is what people usually, I... that's how people react. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really see the point of that. Just like, well, like a MacBook or anything. Sorry, exactly. Um, But yeah, I don't know with the the display and everything it feels it's really easy to use it's really mm -hmm. like i have a question about the stylus um to find does it have like a stylus only mode where it'll like ignore touch inputs from your fingers um because i like i've seen that on some tablets that are like meant for drawing on right so that you don't like you know you can you can oh, yeah. draw without having to worry about whether your palm is going to like you know make lines or whatever um i haven't um discovered that if okay. that is available i don't believe so i mean when you like put it over in tablet mode mm -hmm. it turns off the keyboard because that's that, behind you and you that's don't essential be like, yeah <laughs> um but yeah it 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 does like you know use your yeah your little fingers um if you want to but 
I don't, I, yeah, I just try to use the stylus because I don't want to grease it up. Right. And, yeah. And, you know. Yeah, and the other the other place that I've seen touch screens kind of differentiating themselves is like by having different like pressure sensitivities. Um, and I have no idea if like if this Chromebook can like you know draw darker lines when you're pushing harder with the stylus or anything like that. I do know for this one, um, like if you're in Notes, and I don't know if it does it for other processes or apps or anything but like if you um go like the longer you go with it the wider it becomes oh. the brush like calligraphy kind mm -hmm. of um kind of a yeah calligraphy feel to it um but that's and not I don't based know if you on... can like change those settings so that's not based on pressure that's just based on like how long you've made that particular line yeah okay yeah um Oh, Still, cool. once you get used to that kind of thing, you can probably do pretty interesting things with it. Yeah, yeah I'm just not artistically inclined, so I don't <laughs> need to know mm -hmm. uh, too much about that. But, I mean, if it if somebody else is, then they can find that yeah. out for, them, uh, for themselves. Yeah, but... so if, if you want to use this as, like, a a drawing tablet, a, you know, for making art, that's definitely something that you'll want to look into first before mm -hmm. buying it. Yeah. And it can also get, like, any Android app, so I don't really know mm -hmm. if there's, like, other ones that are more specialized. Um, yeah, yeah. That you can get on here, and then it's... But I, I don't really know how Android... If how, they do that. How does Android? <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about but, the um, the build quality of the laptop itself, because, like, most most Chromebooks, you, you pick them up and you're like, oh, this is plastic. I could tear this apart with my hands. How does this one feel? Uh, it feels a lot, you know, more secure than, you know, mom or dad's. Mm -hmm. Um, they have some pretty lower quality yeah. Chromebooks is what I'll say. Mom and dad uh, refuse to pay more than like $200 for a laptop. And it, I mean, it suits their needs, so oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, but it is metal, mm -hmm. I want to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, it definitely feels like, like it's heftier. It's heavier. It, it yeah is it's not it's still not that heavy at all in mm -hmm. any way um but yeah it it definitely feels more secure and like you know it took a semi to break my other one <laughs> um and and that it didn't even like shatter or anything mm -hmm. it just bent it and I, i'm not really sure like where the chromebook was you know in the crack i mean it was right. on my lap because i was watching mm -hmm. david attenborough's planet earth 2 as you do um as one does i haven't gone back to that yet because <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for that, but um, uh, yeah, it and it yeah, it just bent it so it wouldn't even turn on or anything. Probably yeah. because of all the innards were like ruined or something. Um, if you didn't notice, everybody, I'm not um very technologically adept at um <laughs> or knowledgeable really of anything. <laughs> I, I blame myself for technologically coddling you throughout your oh, youth. Yeah. <laughs> myself and mom um but yeah it, it feels very sturdy um i could probably drop it i'm not going to yeah do that i, um. I wouldn't advise you to do that <laughs> uh, this isn't like a youtube fine. channel where we do drop yeah tests. no i don't have that kind of money uh, <laughs> actually I, I did get insurance on this one mm. because i know my history with electronics and <laughs> also like I'm, I'm hopefully you know studying abroad this spring, and mm -hmm. so uh, that's just a lot more risk, I guess, that I'll be putting it under than I right. normally do. So I did take out like a a warranty for it mm -hmm. um, for the year, and but yeah, it it definitely feels very sturdy. I I don't know, I couldn't snap it. Or right. Anything. The um the hinges like sometimes I I hold these like hybrid ones that flip all the way around, yeah. and the hinges feel really like iffy. How do these ones feel? Um, they feel really good. They don't like stick out or anything either, mm -hmm. so they're not at risk of like catching on anything, catching, yeah, mm -hmm. or anything. And it it's really I don't know natural. And I never had any problems with in you know the six months I had the version one. Mm -hmm. Um, with it, not yeah, there wasn't really any wear or tear. I just had a little bit of like scratch marks on the top that. I don't really remember what those were from, oh. but like it, it didn't have any, you know, impact on the performance, right, 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 anything of the actual Chromebook itself. 
I would like to highlight that the name of the color that this thing comes in is Stealth Silver, which is just kind of like a dark gray. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally just dark gray. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't know, Stealth Silver. <laughs> I also, mm-hmm. I like how the Chrome logo that's up there in the corner on most Chromebooks, right? It's the full color, like uh, mm-hmm. all, all four colors that the Chrome logo is. Uh, but this one is just a darker gray on dark gray. Yeah. Um, so if you're more aesthetically yeah. inclined. It looks very then, handsome. Yeah. Also, um, just something else is like, the keyboard on the mm-hmm. version two, at least for this one, mm-hmm. um, actually has more like tactile feel than the version okay. one. I don't know. If you wanna, so, like, so like when you press them down, down, they travel farther down. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah. And I can actually feel like the keys, mm-hmm. um, which I like, you know, as guidance for when I'm typing. Right. Which is why in like, you know, video games and they have like the display of the keyboard and they're just like typing uh, really fast. It's a like, holographic yeah, keyboard. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you do that? Anyway, because <laughs> um, I still like to have, you know, the little knob on the J and the F key mm-hmm. to guide me. Yep. Um, but yeah, it, it feels great. I don't know. I, I really love like just it's so natural. And mm-hmm. also, I don't know. I don't really know where I'm going with this <laughs> tangent. So. I mean, I I can speak to like I I have confidence in Samsung, especially in their Chromebook lines, on putting good keyboards in there because like the two hundred dollar Chromebook that I had from back in you know two thousand and thirteen or whatever, like that had one of the best keyboards in a laptop mm-hmm. that I have ever used. Um, and so if like if they put a keyboard that good in their two hundred and fifty dollar computer, like. I have a lot of confidence in yeah. the one that's in their five hundred dollar laptop. Yeah. Also, do you know if like all Chromebooks have like the same ones on the top? Yes. Or... Uh, for, yeah. Instead of the function keys, they have the back, forward, reload, full screen, uh, window switcher. What is that? Brightness. Brightness up and down, and then volume keys. Yep. And then lock it. Um, I think I, I remember on mine it that was the power button um but it looks like they just made that into a lock button for this one because i think mm-hmm. it it has its power button on the on side, side yeah like a tablet and you can just hold it down and then for, you can for like the... just lock it mm-hmm. or sign out and it has those it those are volume keys on the on the, on the side as well. as well okay so when you're in tablet mode you can yep easily adjust the volume because mm-hmm. all of the keys don't work in tablet mode right thank god yep so along with the keyboard uh let's talk about the trackpad how does that feel i mean it feels good Mm -hmm. i I don't know it's fluid and you you (laughs) said that you can adjust the sensitivity of like how far the Um, mouse moves i mean probably i (laughs) don't know i haven't tried because i like the settings the way they are now Mm -hmm. it's not like macbooks where it's the opposite and oh yeah the scrolling is reverse yeah Yeah. i hate that that's so stupid if i remember correctly in chrome os the the name that they have for that setting is australian scrolling Ugh, (laughs) gross and they have they have the like multi-finger gestures on for the key for the trackpad still right um like like so like i think back yes Mm, yeah yep yeah they do um so yeah two finger swiping side to side to go back or forward uh in the in that tab's history i think like three finger swipe up or down i don't remember which it is is yeah we'll we'll bring up the like all the windows that you have open um yeah i just learned that one so thank you for that you're welcome yeah that's a pretty useful one alt tab anymore um yeah i don't know i also like that they have like the search key the instead search of the key instead of <laughs> caps lock, which I mean you can just do alt and then the search key and that mm-hmm. turns on caps lock. So yeah, um, just to get to all of my apps or the web or my <laughs> device, as it tells me right along here. Also, the 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 logo right there is also black. I don't know if for, oh the Google logo there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they if they change that because it's in stealth silver. I don't know. <laughs> but um, have you noticed the other way that that chromebooks make their keyboards different all of the letters are in lowercase instead of uppercase oh i didn't notice that yeah on most on most keyboards they're all uppercase but chromebooks are different for the sake of being different (laughs) yeah yeah i also need to like 
I, I figured out on the version one, um, mm-hmm. and I need to figure that out again. I'll probably just go on the Google um, and ask them about like putting different language keyboards on. And it's yeah. really easy. I remember it being very simple. I just don't quite remember how to do it um, because, you know, I, I'm taking Arabic and I'm studying abroad, hopefully in Jordan next semester. So, um, you know, and, and you can easily switch between languages on mm-hmm. the keyboard um, it's just like it's just like a keyboard com or a key combination to switch yeah input, yeah right? something like that or yeah. sometimes i just use like the touch screen just bring in it. it's mm-hmm. it, it's like a something down u.s keyboard there we go and then you can like oh i have it it <laughs> saved it oh that's so nice um yeah and then if i but like the thing is you know arabic has a completely different alphabet yeah so i need to buy like a an overlay yeah, to put on yeah. your keyboard Which or you fine. can just memorize them jonas gosh I... you gotta have a mind like a steel trap no thanks <laughs> so yeah i just switched to arabic the arabic keyboard really easily it's like three clicks also what's really nice is when i um got this version two and then i logged in it like imported literally everything from the version one except for my saved files mm-hmm. um but everything else, like, I, I didn't even, you know, I hadn't even put an Arabic keyboard on this one. Right. But it's still but it's waiting for it you over there. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is really nice. It's super convenient. And also, like, Hamlin University, where I go to school, mm-hmm. where I attend, um, has switched over to, like, us on all of, like, the computers in the library and stuff. Mm-hmm. We, like, sign into our Google, like, account and everything. So, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, and I I always knew that like Chrome and Chromebooks when you sign into your Google account will like take you know grab all the extensions that you have installed on your other computers and like put them on there. I didn't realize that it would like take the the wallpaper, wallpaper. that you had on yeah. your old Chromebook. That's really really nice. Yeah, so I didn't have to try to find that picture again or anything. Mm-hmm. Um like I wish that my Android phone would, you know, go to those lengths. Mm-hmm. Like about sixty percent of that stuff gets ported over from one phone to another, but like, it's it's yeah. it's not the same as yeah, just yeah. having everything. So literally to set up this my new Chromebook, all I had to do was sign into my Gmail, mm-hmm. and then I haven't had to do uh, import anything else or go out of my way to get any like it install automatically installed all the apps i had on my other one including like hearthstone and the other android apps and everything yeah yeah all of the android apps it it installed automatically installed all the ones that i had on that one Mm -hmm. um and it i don't need like i said it imported all of the other information the keyboard information Mm -hmm. my wallpaper obviously my browser um yeah information I the, just have the theme that you have. Yeah, for your browser yeah, my theme. <laughs> um, although I did have to sign into like in browser, like Facebook, right? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Twitter, and yeah, because because that's based on like session information, I think. So I don't think there's really any way that they could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like the only other things I had to. Only like I'm a very lazy person, so that's the only effort I, <laughs> <laughs> I had to put into, you know, setting this thing up. Yeah, you know, at Google. Uh, We have a point of view about software and technology, namely that it should get out of the way uh, and allow people to do what they do best. That's live, learn, and love. And and that's like exactly what Chromebooks are kind of marketing themselves as is like, this is a computer where you don't have to put in any effort. You know, Mm -hmm. it it does all of the security, it updates itself, and it, you know, it imports all your settings and everything. So um, sounds like it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, let's talk about the nitty gritty tech specs. Um, so this year, uh, it has an Intel Celeron processor at 1.5 gigahertz, um, which is actually a pretty big change from last year's Chromebook Plus, because um, last year it was running a a Samsung Exynos processor, I think, because it was it was based it was basically a tablet architecture, um, but in a in you know a tablet uh, case, right? Um, But now they're running an actual Intel processor, which is more in line with like what you'd expect in a laptop. Um, It's got four gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of solid state storage. Um, And I'm really I'm glad that it has four gigs of RAM because that is like the one that's like the one thing that I look for in a Chromebook. Right. Is like 
Most of them come with either 2 gigs of RAM or 4 gigs of RAM. And the ones with 2 gigs of RAM really struggle sometimes to, like, to, like, do multiple things at once. Like, if you've got three tabs open, right? Or mom's 50 tabs. Yeah, oh, man, mom, oh, never, man. mom never closed <laughs> oh, any God, tabs. No. no, so what time she, um, when I was over at Subashri's, like, adoption reunion, mm-hmm. um, we were trying to figure out my FAFSA, mm-hmm. and she she like had it open. I'm like, Mom, you have like 30 tabs open. She's like, Oh, but there's more. And she opened another window <laughs> with another 30 tabs uh, open. I'm like, Amy, this is why we can't load the page. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is why nothing's working. And I'm sure that like it's it's a it's a vicious cycle, right? Where she'll like go. Well, I can't find the tab that I'm looking for, so I'll open a new tab and, like, open up fa- Gmail again or whatever. That's <laughs> so dumb. I'm like, just bookmark things. and <laughs> yeah. I taught her how to do that, but I don't think she's, you know, she's a, habitually just has, you know, 60 tabs open at a time, so I don't think that's ever going to change. I, I even taught her how to, like, pin, you know, Gmail and Facebook down mm-hmm. to the taskbar, and they, like, open up as a separate yeah. window, but then I'll still catch her with, like, a tab open for gmail even though she already had a window open for yeah. gmail Ugh. mother let's talk about the battery life so i know you haven't taken it out for like long stretches of like class time have you yet no, no. but um i mean yeah i've had it for like a week and a half and yeah. literally all i've done is play hearthstone on it <laughs> because i i don't start classes till next week um i mean i think that is a good usage case because like when i'm playing hearthstone on my tablet that is the thing that like drains the drains battery. the battery fastest yeah, yeah and it, it playing hearthstone usually it's been lasting about like four to five hours okay um and like that yeah at, in school i'm gonna need it for like google drive mm-hmm. and like chrome yeah you know? um so i i am very confident that i and i haven't needed to like really charge it mm-hmm. um i mean obviously i've needed to charge it <laughs> um, it's been a week and a half but yeah. i haven't charged it yet. yeah no no I've, I've only charged it a handful of times okay. and um it doesn't like lose battery life overnight or anything Mm -hmm. um and it like i said it it lasts a long time um and it also like when you have it plugged in yeah on this side because you can only plug it in on this side that's one criticism i have of the version two as opposed to the version one we were Mm -hmm. probably going to get to this later but i'm getting to it now it was literally the next thing is the ports um yeah so like it has um this one has two type c USB ports mm-hmm. on the starboard. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> on the left side. La- on the left yeah. side. Um, and that's the charger is the USB Type C. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and the the version one also had two on the left side, and but the version one had one Type C on the right side. But mm-hmm. this one has a Type A. Yes, the Type A. Um, the full size the, USB. Yeah, yeah, the full yep. size. Um, usb on the right side but no type c's on the right side yeah um which i would have kind of preferred if they had the type a on the left side because i like that they have the type a Mm -hmm. um i mean i still have my adapter that i bought um because i had oh yeah a the to version, type C. Version one had like two or three USB C ports, but no USB A ports. Yeah. yeah. So so I have an adapter from you know those days, mm-hmm. um, but. Yeah, I do like that they actually have a Type A. I just would have preferred it on the left side, and then mm-hmm. have the other Type C on the right side, so yeah. that I can actually charge it from either side. This is just kind of a convenience thing for me, so that it's not just like stretching over my whole body yeah. or like, um, you know, in Caleb's face as he's on the couch. <laughs> um, so, what other ports do we have on here? So we mentioned the three USB ports, and then we've got a headphone jack and micro sd micro sd yes hard on the left side and then the right side just has the type a the power button the volume buttons and then the stylus which mm-hmm. like clicks out of there yeah Ooh, just something just occurred to me yeah. um there was a uh, samsung galaxy note something or other where like the stylus if you accidentally put it in like rotated the wrong way then it would like break the holder and you wouldn't be able to get the pen back out i hope that they no it were smart enough to not it just like doesn't let you actually it does oh it clicked in it can it lets it click in and it doesn't come out and you can click it out easily it just looks okay. funky okay yeah um and the plastic's actually... just 
oriented like the curve is oriented the other way do. you'd better be able to get that out of there boy i, I can get it out. I'll just... do you need some there tweezers okay, okay there go. yeah i got it so don't do that uh, um yeah so put it back in the right way i really like that it charges via USB C um mm. because well for one thing like since i use an android phone that has a USB C port right then like that enables you to use just one charger for all of your devices um you have an iphone so that doesn't quite apply to you but it does allow you to for example like have a nice big external battery that you could plug into like either your phone or you could plug it into your laptop and charge it um which is not possible with more traditional laptops like this macbook air over here that still uses magsafe um there's no way that i'll be able to plug that into my external battery yeah yeah um just yeah gives you more more options um oh there is one thing um so so we talked about like the the laser pointer mode right where Mm -hmm. it's like okay if you're if you've got this plugged into a projector right then okay obviously since it doesn't have like an hdmi port or a vga port or anything like that right you're gonna need to use an adapter to go from like USB C to whatever that projector uses that's one thing about USB C is that like you know obviously apple has their like macbook pros that you know have USB C ports and you could like if if somebody bought an adapter that's meant for going from a macbook to a projector i don't think those would work on this samsung because um i don't think that the samsung chromebook implements thunderbolt um which is a you know higher performance like protocol uh that apple has has been pushing a lot um but is not nearly as common on like lower end laptops like this one yeah i mean it is a 500 hundred dollar laptop jonas it's you know yeah i I wouldn't expect it to to have thunderbolt um but that's we're we're in that kind of awkward phase now where it's like okay this USB C adapter is this going to work with this device or is it not who knows yeah. yeah um i think we did figure out last year that the like USB C to headphone adapters that i had for the pixel right i think those worked with your old samsung chromebook right it was able to play music through the headphones that we plugged into the adapter into the USB C port um i think so yeah yeah uh haven't tried it with this newer one but like it has a headphone jack anyway yeah it's just it's more of a curiosity like oh did they build this to mm-hmm. to implement the same thing yep we talked about that. we did talk about the keyboard yep. yeah um the weight of this thing um it is 1.33 kilograms haha <laughs> i use metric it's uh just shy of three pounds um and i mean the reason it feels heavy i think is just because it's a small laptop that is you know it's it's dense right Mm -hmm. um but overall like three pounds is isn't anything bad to put in your backpack um and yeah it's got such such a small frame that like you're not going to have any trouble fitting it into any bags whatsoever no which is really nice um especially with some of the classes i'm taking the number Mm -hmm. of books i've had anyway yeah uh, (laughs) yeah that's just the life of a social science major um but let's see. Oh, you want to talk about the cameras next? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, actually, before we talk about oh, the okay. cameras, um, I do have one thing that has to do with size. This thing looks like it doesn't have any fans. Is is that accurate? Yeah. Um, that's really that's really cool. Because uh, yeah. usually yeah. I would expect that from like a Chromebook that's running um, like an Exynos processor, some some tablet processor. Usually the Intel ones do have fans, but this one doesn't. Yeah, it does sometimes, like, if I've been playing Hearthstone for too long, which is, like, the highest end, like, thing I'm going to be doing mm-hmm. on this. Um, get a little warm, like, right kind of in the middle of the bottom, mm-hmm. like, mid- center front. Okay. Um, uh, it, it does get a little hot, but it's not, like, bad, and I don't think I'm overheating it. Mm-hmm um and usually they have safeguards where like the computer will literally just shut itself down if it gets too hot so hopefully i don't ever do (laughs) yeah hopefully not to get that get to that point um yeah because then you'd forfeit that match and that'd be awful (laughs) you Uh, (laughs) oh shoot i'm sorry (laughs) um darn you 
yeah so no it doesn't and and it's so it's not like obnoxious when yeah. i just have it on my lap which i know you're not like supposed to do with laptops yeah. or whatever <laughs> but i do it because and it, it also has uh kind of a more practical a- application as well is that like it the the fewer moving parts a laptop has right the less likely it is to break right mm-hmm. um like I remember with my old Samsung Chromebook, I accidentally dropped it off of uh, the top bunk of a bunk bed onto a hardwood floor and it landed like A-frame tent style, right? And it was still running. It yeah. was just fine. Um, if it had had like a fan or like a spinning hard drive or something like that, right? Those those could have gotten messed up and yeah. you know then, uh, well, okay, we got to get this repaired or like since it's just a really cheap laptop like me, we just replace it. One thing I have noticed about like placement of mm-hmm. hardware and stuff, the speakers, mm-hmm. um, it has one on each side mm-hmm. on the bottom. Yeah, on the bottom. Um, so like it, you know, if I have it just on my lap and I'm trying to like watch Netflix or something, mm-hmm. then sometimes it it gets it's a little quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, Does it get like which, muffled by your shorts or something if it's resting on them? Yeah, sometimes. And so sometimes if it it if it does that, I kind of fold it out like a frame style okay. um so that like the display it's is kind of bent like a frame but the you know the display right. is facing towards me and the keyboard is facing the other way just which so means that, that the speakers are facing towards you it's towards okay, me yeah. and, i mean they're like a little bit farther away like mm-hmm. you know six inches farther away or whatever this is um but like but they're, they're not being muffled right they're blasting straight at your face yeah yeah, yeah. um so, you know, kind of adapting to that. I've also noticed that, like, on the the Google Play app, mm-hmm. the music okay. is a lot, is louder than, like, say, Netflix volume. Hmm. Um, so, okay. like, I have to turn the volume way up on the computer itself for Netflix, mm-hmm. but not for, like, Google Play, which I don't really know why that is. And it, they're, they are, like, different apps. Right. And so you're so. using the Android app versions of those of services, both. right? Yeah. Because, yeah. um, like, when you're using the the website versions of those, you know, they have their own independent, like, volume sliders. So you could, like, you know, adjust, like, the Google Play Music's mm-hmm. volume to go down so that it's kind of level with, like, what Netflix is going to be. But okay. I don't think that's possible in the Android app versions. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I mean, I can mess around with it and try, but yeah. I mean, I just like having, um, especially with Netflix, I like having the app because I can download certain shows yeah. and stuff yeah. so I can watch them offline. And, um, and that is that is the interesting thing about like having Android apps available on a Chromebook now is that like you kind of, yeah, for, for each different service that you use, you have to evaluate and figure out like, okay, is the website version better or is the Android version better? Mm-hmm. but i like having the choice yeah exactly I like having the option because like you know facebook the mm-hmm. app is awful oh agreed um so I, I go on the browser but then you know netflix it's i, I like it more um because you can download like yeah. shows and for like offline viewing. youtube mm-hmm. app um you have some more options with that as well that's actually kind of or, that's that's the one thing that I usually evaluate when I'm choosing between like an Android version or the web version is like, does the Android app version allow me to download content for offline mm-hmm. use? And if yes, then I'll use the Android version. If no, then the web ver- yeah. version is probably better. Um, although what I have noticed, like with Netflix mm-hmm. being, you know, the app is it it's definitely intended for touch screens. Okay, just the way that like the ui the user interface yes. is, is set up like the buttons are a little bit bigger right and... And, and like like you you know if you touch the screen then it shows like the pause and everything oh yeah they don't um, so the the control buttons don't show up when you just like jiggle the mouse no okay. you have to like tap it that's funny. first and then pause it um and i don't remember if like pressing space bar pauses it mm. um because i'm usually just like have my thumb right there and i'll just go whoop yeah um but uh yeah so so it's definitely like and and also just how like the browsing different shows and stuff shows Mm -hmm. up it's definitely you have to like click and drag Mm -hmm. and there's no like over arrow to get to more oh okay yeah yeah yeah. so it is it is much 
Um, I usually use the stylus when I'm on Netflix mm-hmm. because it is designed. Right. Th- there's towards. there's like almost no way to avoid using the touch screen. Yeah. Because that's just kind of what it was built for. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't mind doing that. Yeah. Um, I because of the perks of having the app. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's a price worth paying yeah i guess what you said about the the space bar made me think for a moment i was like oh yeah a lot of these apps probably weren't as- built to assume that there's a keyboard attached but then i remembered that like okay actually android for like the entirety of its existence has supported like the use of keyboards so you could like either plug an external keyboard into your phone or your tablet to use it um, or sometimes they would come out with tablets that actually have a keyboard built into them, right? So I think most Android apps actually do pretty well at like incorporating a you know a mm-hmm. keyboard and or mouse input if the if need be. Yeah, yeah. Which you know I I, I bet at at the time when they were first making Android, they probably weren't planning on like putting it onto a laptop yeah. like this. But like, hey, it turns out that was a good strategy yeah. over time. You were very excited to talk about these cameras. Oh, God. Okay. We're getting <laughs> to the cameras. Um, so it has two cameras. Two cameras. Uh, which is new to the version two. Mm-hmm. It has one camera, you know, where most laptops have cameras up in the above the display. Mm-hmm. Um, the webcam. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then it also has one down above the keyboard. On like the lower section, yeah, uh, kind so of. So it's, the... it's right in between the top row of keys and like the hinge. Yeah, yeah. the left hand side hinge. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're using it as a tablet, you see yeah. that camera and you're like, "What the heck is that for? Am I gonna take pictures of like the inside of my nose?" <laughs> I mean, I could, but um, yeah. But then what you mean when you put it in when it's in laptop? Mode, That's what did I say? Tablet? Say tablet. Ah, I'm so stupid. Yeah, you kind of are, but. That's not the point we're trying to make. Uh, um, so yeah, so so you kind of have it, and it's just kind of watching you, and you know whoever whoever collects this data, mm-hmm. um, it's just it's just gonna see my my nose, which is fine. Whatever, I need to pluck a few hairs out of it, but that's my own business. <laughs> um, but then once you put it into tablet mode, mm-hmm. then you see that like you have you know the display on this side, which uh, also. Um, and then the camera is facing outwards mm-hmm. towards the world, so you can take pictures of things. Yes. Um, and you can look even worse than a person using yeah. an iPad <laughs> yeah. to take pictures. Um, so I don't really know if they like expect people to um, do this, yeah. or if they were just like, hey, the option's available to you. They had a little bit of space left, and they're like, mm-hmm. why don't we do this? <laughs> I can tell you that, like... For schools that use Chromebooks, right, that's a pretty common use case is the teachers having the students, like, take videos or take pictures of whatever project they're doing or something like that. Yeah. Um, outside of the education world, I can't imagine, like, having the self-confidence to hold up this <laughs> this laptop that has been converted into a tablet and hold it up in front of my face and everybody who's getting their picture taken sees the keyboard because the keyboard is facing away from me also yeah i just don't like the camera like yeah app or whatever it's an mm. app but prom i think it's an app yeah okay it's sure. a system app but yeah, yeah. um because it's not easy to like close or oh. get rid of okay um and also i don't know it just takes forever and i'm not gonna be but i'm also just not gonna be taking pictures with yeah this. no um that's not something i need to be doing so i don't need to worry about it but i like there's the option available if you mm-hmm. ever feel like if you're ever out with your laptop and not your phone yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you need to get a picture or something um uh, and so yeah for those who are interested um the front facing camera the webcam is a 1 megapixel camera uh and then the one that faces outwards is a 13 megapixel camera yay yeah also you can't like with the i i messed around with the forward facing one a little mm-hmm. bit you can't zoom or anything okay. i couldn't figure out how to make it zoom mm. um uh, so you can easily just like crop, yeah, and and whatnot. But... Yep, 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 yep. Which is what phones are doing when you zoom in is yeah. technically they're just cropping the image. But um, yeah, I th- it does make it easier for people if you can just like do that 
when you're like right when you're taking the picture mm -hmm. instead of having to go back into it later let's touch on the software a little bit before we end here um so the operating system chrome os is um definitely the most polarizing operating system out there um you know there's there's the quintessential like windows or mac argument and then literally everybody is like oh chrome os like oof um and I, and I definitely would still say that, like, Chrome OS is not really ready for it to be your, your one and only computer. Um, like, you have to really have drank the Google Kool-Aid for, you know, in order for, like, your entire life to be accessible from a Chromebook. Um, like, you will never be able to play your Steam library, right, on yeah. this Chromebook. Um, but you can play your Android games. Whoop there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and and yeah there's there's still a lot of a lot of programs you know like okay there is a version of photoshop that's available for chromebooks it's like the android version of of uh lightroom or whatever adobe made but like you know it's it's still not quite the desktop you know program um i have no idea if there are any like good audio editors right i definitely know that audacity itself isn't available on chromebooks some, there's probably some other um equivalent that somebody's made but i don't know you know like there aren't there just aren't enough people using chromebooks yet for that to really be um a big market um however supposedly soon google will be making it very easy to install windows on a chromebook if you want to um and but like i don't know for sure if that's going to come true um if it does come true then i think i think that we're going to see like higher end Chromebooks from like the five hundred dollar range on up being like much more of a strong option for people, right? Because up until now, Chromebooks have been really like dominating the two hundred dollar ish market because like they're able to be that cheap because Chrome OS doesn't run very many programs, right? So it's a it's a very lightweight operating system, um, and so because of that, you can run it on very lightweight hardware. Now as of like 2017 onwards we also have the very interesting relationship of like okay you can you can install android apps on a chromebook and they run really well right um there i don't think there are any other really like devices that meld like desktop and and mobile stuff nearly as well as chromebooks you know like windows has been trying to do that a lot with like you know we've got the surface and stuff like that a lot of a lot of touchscreen windows computers but they still you know there just aren't mobile apps for them because like windows failed as a mobile operating system um like you'd think that apple would be doing this like you know that they would make it available like ios apps to be run on macs but who knows what apple is thinking i don't like, know yeah with a lot of their decisions like it yeah it it seems like such a no brainer to me but they d haven't done it um but yeah like i mean google has just gone like oh yeah sure android apps on chromebooks let's do it yeah and it's and it's happened and it's it works like, great yeah I love it. um yeah so like i think yeah it, it, if if this nebulous future comes to pass where you can like install windows on a Chromebook, mm -hmm. then like, dang, that is my go-to laptop. Right. Yeah. Um, because like I can run Android apps on it. I can run Chrome OS, which is like a really fun operating system to use. Um, or if I need to do something more, you know, powerful, more in depth, right. I can switch over to windows and use that. And then, you know, there's nothing that it can't do. Sorry, Apple fanboys, but, you know, like, that, <laughs> that's my stance. Yeah. <laughs> now, of course, we're, we're not quite there yet because we can't install Windows on, on Chromebooks. But, like, if that happens, then, dang, that'll, that'll be huge. Um, Chrome OS, of course, gets, like, updates on the regular. Um, all of the extensions that you've got installed on this thing are going to keep themselves up to date whether you want them to or not. Um, which I think is a really good thing yeah. because like a lot of, like most people just don't want to deal with that. Right. And they just dismiss. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the operating system itself will like, even like, even if you don't restart it very often, right. If you don't shut your Chromebook down very often, um, I think it will prompt you saying like, Hey, there's an update available. You can, you can restart. Yeah. Um, I hardly ever notice yeah. when it updates, like it gives a little mm -hmm. indicator, like, down in the lower right like the notifications mm -hmm. corner 
um, that like it's updated, you know, all my apps or, mm -hmm. or, you know, that it is updating. And that's like usually really the only indication I ever get that it's updated. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember it prompting me to restart like twice in the okay. six months that I had it really. So it, it doesn't. It's it's not very intrusive at all and to they, the user. And they happen really fast, right? Yeah. Like, it just restarts in, like, eight seconds, and there you go. You've got the updates. Yeah, yeah. it's um, not like Windows where you have to yeah. wait forever. <laughs> and to be fair to Windows, like, those updates do happen a lot faster these days. But Chrome OS, like, um, the reason that, that they those go so fast actually is a really cool thing. Um, so they'll have, like, two different copies of the operating system on in your storage and it'll be like using one of those copies to run let's call that copy a and when it downloads like an update it'll install that onto copy b which isn't currently being used and then when you restart it'll switch from using copy a to using copy b so it doesn't actually have to like do the update when it's restarting it just restarts and yeah. uses the other partition um yeah and and for a long time, like Chrome OS was the only operating system, I think, that used that model. And then they introduced that in Android as well a couple of years ago. But like Chrome OS had it had that model for like a really long time, um, which is cool. Um, and the other the other thing to look at with updates is like, do they continue to release updates long after the, you know, the device was sold? Um, and yeah, I mean, like Google is continuously updating Chrome itself. And usually pretty much, you know, as they're updating Chrome on like desktops, right? There's the same updates going out to Chromebooks. Um, and I don't, I'm not aware of any Chromebooks that have ever like been taken off of their list of like, you know, laptops that continue to get updates. Um, my five-year-old Chromebook was still getting updates until the day that it got stepped on and broke. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, um, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's right up there with like windows or Mac, I think for in the, in the updates department. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jonas, any final thoughts on this laptop? Yeah. I'll just give my, my final review or whatever. <laughs> um, so I really like it. I mm -hmm. mean, it's really, it's super convenient for me. Um, as a college student, I don't know, it's lightweight, it's it's super compact, it's easy to carry around, it um, performs all of, you know, the, it, it fulfills all the uses I need out of a laptop. Mm -hmm. um, I can, it's not disruptive. I don't know, you know, some people have like those those Mac keyboards in their classes, it's like clack, 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 <laughs> um, which is, just grinds my gears. Mm -hmm. Um and, and it can also, um, you know, I usually use Google Drive for everything, mm -hmm. but, you know, sometimes some professors like to have um, Word or which you, but you can get those on right. um, yeah. Chromebooks. You can get any. Because there's an Android version of Word. Yeah, Word yeah. and Excel. Um, yeah, Excel and like presentation, the PowerPoint, whatever that one's mm -hmm. called. Um, but so like, that's really nice. Um, and, and even if you don't go and get those Android versions, like... Google Drive itself has, does a really good job of like, oh, we'll we'll take this file and we'll open it up in Google Docs and then you can export it as a Word document yeah. again as well. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know it has a really long battery life, mm -hmm. it, um, so I, I you know almost never have to worry about whether or not it's charged when I go out for the day. Um, and you know, I usually just bring the charger around with me and I have two chargers oh, yeah. now, you know, from one from the old one and one from this one. Oh yeah. Um, so I'll probably just keep one in my laptop and the one at home, um, you know, just in case, but it, I don't know. It, and it, it doesn't like, you know, there's not any problems with it, like glitching or like, mm -hmm. you know, running slowly or anything like that. Um, so I don't have to worry it's it's really nice because you know I have so many other things to worry about in my life. <laughs> this is not one of the things I have to worry about. That's good, yeah. Um, and so so you know I can just easily. I'm just thinking back to like when I had you know my gaming laptop mm. and that had so many problems oh, with man. it. Like, yeah, that's a t completely different conversation. Uh, it took me years to figure out that like the main problem with that laptop was that it had a bad sector of RAM yeah. and we just needed to like pull the RAM out and put new sticks of RAM in. That was 
That was uh, something else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't expect to have that kind of problem with this, mm-hmm. and I haven't. Um, and I, I do expect to have this for a very long time. You know, I'm kind of, I mean, you know, as my life gets busier, I'm moving away from, like, gaming. Yeah. Which was Same. the only other thing I ever really needed what needed i ever really did with a computer (laughs) Mm -hmm. um and even if you do want to game on it like obviously there's way more games available for windows but like we are increasingly living in a world where like a lot of games are coming out for android as well as uh all the other platforms um and so you know i expect to have this for for years Mm -hmm. hopefully um and it's going to continue to like fulfill all the needs I'm going to, you know, ha- need. Oh, I yeah. just need twice in a sentence. Anyway, um, like, so I, I really like it. Um, I just, you know, the camera's a little iffy yeah. a bit. I don't like that the, it only has USB type C on one mm-hmm. side. Um, oh, I would like to note that. Because this has two USB C ports, um, it is totally possible to plug a USB C to C cable into both of those and tell it to charge itself, and it will do that. And it like halves the battery life, <laughs> so it's a, you would never want to do that. Yeah. But it is something that you can trick the like laptop into doing. Wow, <laughs> just the options are yeah. endless with this. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so and I, I you know having Chrome for a while and stuff i really like it it's really easy to navigate i'm, mm-hmm. I'm not somebody who's an expert in any way right or, <laughs> so it's with, very familiar with, yeah, yeah yeah and even um going from windows to to chrome um to a chromebook it was it was super easy to adjust um and it, it feels very natural just moving around in it um yeah. So I, I like it. I don't know. I'd give it like a 4.5 stars. Out of, out of five. five. Good. <laughs> out of five, yes. Um, four and a half, I should have said, but whatever. Um, yeah, so so it, it's a good piece of hardware to mm-hmm. carry around with me. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, because cur- currently, like, I'm, I'm thinking about where it would fit into my life, right? And I think it would definitely be like the, a replacement for the the eight inch tablet that I have, which I mainly use as like an e reader for when I'm going to bed. Mm-hmm. Um, but it it comes really really close to like it could almost be a replacement for the laptop that I use as well. Um, the only thing that I do with this MacBook that I couldn't really do with the Chromebook is like heavy duty audio editing. Yeah, yeah, which I do a lot of because like man, I make a lot of podcasts. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't, and I don't, yeah. like, you know, have, I'm a political science and global studies double major, like, mm-hmm. I don't have any need for any heavy duty, like, arts programs, yeah. or, like, statistics programs, or anything like that, so I don't have to worry about those, so I can't say for, like, every college student mm-hmm. or anything, but it, it's super convenient yeah. to get around. So, Jonas, yeah, where can people find you on the internet? Oh, God. And if you don't want to uh, name any of your social media accounts, you don't have to. But I'm not going to do my Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> um, my Instagram oh. is Jonas S. Buck. No, all lowercase, no special symbols or anything. Just mm-hmm. J-O-N-A-S-S-B-U-C-K. <laughs> and that's um, my family friendly social media account <laughs> follow me i can't believe that your instagram is your family friendly one like that's that's not what i usually think of when i think of instagram right i don't know it's just pictures of myself like, <laughs> uh and i am ian arbuck you can find me at most places uh including twitter at uh ian arbuck and my website ian arbuck.com stuff like that um Second Opinion is a production of The Nexus TV. We are a network of technology-focused podcasts. You can discuss this episode with other listeners on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash The Nexus TV. Um, we would love to hear from you regarding 
ideas for other things that we can review or if you want to come on the show and review something for us we we love to have uh guests on for that uh if you are able to support us financially we have a patreon where you can go and get some cool rewards like uh day one access to our behind the scenes show um and you can vote on topics like future future products that you want us to review stuff like that um if you want to use any part of this episode feel free to do that because it is released under a creative commons attribution license so do anything you want with it as long as you link back to the original page which again is the nexus.tv slash so 48 And remember that no matter where you're listening, you should subscribe to Second Opinion Reviews in your favorite podcast player. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from from the the Technological Convergence. Convergence. Tech news is dominated by big announcements with big, bombastic personalities. Developers, 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 developers. Sometimes they make us laugh. Yes, I'd like to order 4,000 lattes to go, please. Sometimes we laugh at them. Courage. Sometimes we're filled with awe. There it is. Check that out. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes they throw shade. Toxic hell stew. Sometimes they inspire. Live, learn, and love. They never want us to forget. Remember. That the show's never over. Because. I got one more thing. Now, it's often difficult to make the journey to see these events live. This is a freaking dirt road! Oh my god! (laughs) But we here at the Nexus TV have got you covered. On our show, Nexus Special, we recap and analyze all the biggest announcements and keynote events in the tech world. So come join us as we explore the brave new worlds that await us. Subscribe to Nexus Special in your favorite podcast player today.